Moi! I would like to start the third part of the documentary called Stage uh, Centuries, which uh, belong to the series of videos titled Suomelle, with a few words of gratification to all of the viewers for the support shown toward uh, this project. I keep uh, receiving very beautiful emails, especially from people who got to the same conclusion with me that there's a deliberate agenda in to hide information about the history of the country of Finland and the group of Finnic and Uralic in general languages. And this series is dedicated to research deeply the reason of such manipulation of knowledge and free Finnish culture from its capture. What uh, shocked me the most about this series of documentaries is the number of viewers that receive uh, daily. I mean, I personally don't have any social network. I don't have a computer. The one I'm using uh, belongs to the Finnish researcher Unlinked Bird, which is every day more and more becoming the core of this project. And I don't even have a phone. So my videos are just there. I cannot uh, believe the power of the viewers that share them and like them. I really want to dedicate all of my works to you. Life creation is uh, of the viewers even more than mine. But uh, let's now start this third and last part of the video with a question. Have you ever heard of Great uh, Tartaria? It is now long time that I present this question to literally hundreds of people of uh, every age, uh, culture or background. And really only few have uh, an affirmative uh, answer, which is very surprising in the case of Finnish people, because uh, until just few hundred years ago, this enormous nation or country of Euro-Asia called Tartaria was just next door and it was uh, actually including the entire Urals mountain area which uh, as we have learned in the previous episode is where the Finnic group of languages have uh, its origins and the idea that at school in Finland they forget to teach to the kids that the largest empire of all was their neighbor is at least uh, fishy so let's start investigate a bit this uh, small forgotten Finnish neighbor. I will start uh, as usual with the first uh, response from the main research engine in internet because uh, as I said in the previous part of this video people tend to use the first uh, answer believing that it is also the most uh, correct and checked. Tartari, Latin Tartaria or Great uh, Tartari, Latin Tartaria Magna, was uh, a name used from the Middle Ages until the 20th century to designate the great uh, tract of Northern and Central Asia, stretching from the Caspian Sea and the Ural Mountains to the Pacific Ocean, inhabited mostly by Turkic people after the Mongol invasion. It uh, incorporates the current areas of uh, Pontic uh, Caspian Steppe, Volga Urals, Caucasus, Siberia, Turkestan, Mongolia, and Manchuria. And I will read you one more quote. As the Russian Empire expanded eastward and more of Tartary became known to the Europeans, the term fell into disuse. Basically, that so-called historians are telling us that Tartaria is actually no country, but a name for land of nomad tribes that were known badly by cartographers until the 19th century. But in the 16th century, just few decades after the discovery of America, the same cartographer, they were able to map all of the main rivers of the jungle of South America as I showed you in the previous part of this video. So, Tartaria was a name for undiscovered areas of the North and Central Asia. 
On the screen at this moment, we can observe a series of maps made by the cartographer Abraham Ortelius. And I will use again his works because I already proved in the previous part that his maps are considered genuine and authentic by all of the historians. And as we can see on this particular work from 1592, Tartaria is actually pretty well mapped and known. There's all the rivers, uh, forests, towns. Actually, to me, Finland, it looks much less discovered than Tartaria. I don't think that is so difficult to see that uh, in the 16th century, those lands were pretty well known to the Western cartographer. But the so-called historians, they just can't realize it. They are assuring us that Tartaria is a name for undiscovered landmass. I'm sorry, I hope not to offend anyone, but a person really don't want to see it, to miss it. I will let you enjoy a few geographical works from some very respected cartographers of the 16th, 17th and all the way to the 19th century representing this enormous nation or country. By the way, at the bottom of this video, I have posted a link to literally hundreds of maps representing Tartaria. But now let's go check what the Encyclopedia Britannica, which is a very respected encyclopedia, was telling us about this unknown and undiscovered land of nomad tribes already in 1771 keeping in mind that today historians are assuring us that Tartaria was not a country and has never been a country, so we don't need to study it at school. On the screen, I will show you that the encyclopedia was even mentioning the various types of Tartars. So, Tartary, a vast country in the northern part of Asia, bounded by Siberia on the north and west. This is called Great Tartary. So also the Encyclopedia Britannica, 245 years ago, was clearly telling us that Tartaria was a vast country. But today historians, they don't know about this small detail. It is just unreal. But let's continue. The Tartars, who lie south of Moscovy and Siberia, are those of uh, Astrakhan, Circassia and Dagestan, situated northwest of the Caspian Sea. The Uzbek Tartars and Mogus, who lie north of Persia and India. The Kalmuk Tartars, who lie between Siberia and the Caspian Sea. And lastly, those of Tibet, who lie northwest of China. Let's now talk just a bit about the Great uh, Wall of China. At the bottom of this video, I have posted a link to the work of the New Earth Channel on this topic. Historians and the main research engine in Internet, they are assuring us 
that the construction of the Great Wall of China was an ongoing project that lasts for thousands of years. And its purpose, as we can read on the screen, was to protect the Chinese state and empires against the rights and invasion of the various nomadic groups of the Eurasian steppe. And here they give us the various dates of the construction of the wall, starting with the 7th century BC, then the 2nd century BC, and the most recent part, which date from the 13th till the 17th century. But as we can observe on these uh, images, the wall, to me, look very recent. The erosion on the structure does not match the thousand of years of the supposed construction time. In fact, I cannot find the Great Wall of China in any old map predating the end of the 1600s. And more interesting is that in the diaries of the merchant traveler Marco Polo, which life belong, uh, as we can see on the screen, to the 13th and 14th uh, centuries, there's no mention of this Chinese uh, wonder. And the idea that he could have missed to notice a structure of that size is disconnected from reality. It's more logical to think that it wasn't there, like all of the maps until the 16th century clearly prove. And also its defensive purpose are very fishy, due to the fact that pass under hills where enemy could easily attack the Chinese army, showering them with arrows, and the entrance to the wall are facing south toward China, but in many places also north toward the supposed enemy lands. But please go look at the documentary of the New Earth Channel that I have posted at the bottom of this video, which cover in details all of this foggy question. By the way, on the screen, you can see an illustration of Marco Polo wearing Tartar's outfit and the emblems in the background are those of Tartaria. But I will continue giving you proof that the historians of our days are just copy-pasting foggy information one with another and parroting it to the student in the various universities. On the screen at this moment, you can see the genealogy of the various rulers of Tartaria. So these nomad tribes, they even have a genealogical tree for their emperors. It is uh, incredible. But of course, a no country land have its own flags, it is obvious. And the flags of Tartaria, they even appear on American Encyclopedia in the late 1800s, as you can see on the screen. I will let you enjoy some images showing uh, mention in books emblems and flags of this uh, undiscovered no country land in uh, images uh, courtesy of the New York Channel. One of my best friends, which is uh, actually more than a father for me, 
was the professor of history and philosophy of the University of Rome, Italy, now jubilated. By the way, he can read and translate various uh, ancient languages, for example, Greek uh, and Latin. And when we were living uh, together in Africa many years ago, he taught me to go research by myself everything that I'm interested uh, of in life and not copy pasting information just because somebody with a big or important name said it. And I have learned this also with many German scholars in Canary Island, Spain, my home, that they have refused to teach in schools because of the lack of credibility of the topics that they should have presented in the various educational institutions. And they have chosen to live a, a simple but full of knowledge life. On the screen uh, you can appreciate some photograph that I personally took years ago when I was living in the African desert. And I would like to dedicate it to all of those people that search for answers and truth. So let's try to understand why this gigantic uh, country or nation was uh, eradicated from uh, our recent history books. As we have learned in the first part of this episode of Suomelle, what this uh, parasitic society behind the scene want is lowering the human consciousness and us to think that it is thousands of years that there's wars and conflict, that it is thousands of years that civilization after civilization, humans were fighting and killing each other. And the idea that until few centuries ago, there was a unified and peaceful society of the size of Tartaria was very disturbing for their agenda. So what they did, as with all of the rest of our history, was burning and destroy every proof and account of such society. On the screen, you can see a couple of uh, examples of how they were presenting the Tartars in the Western Europe as uh, monsters eating uh, human flesh and drinking blood. It is uh, very easy with propaganda to twist the mind of entire societies. We are currently experiencing one of the biggest examples of this, but it could not be enough. So let's send again German historians to take care of the critical studies of the Russian history like in the case of Ludwig von Schlosser, as we have learned in the first part of this video, and as they did with the Finnish and Estonian written language. On the screen at this moment, you can see the names of the historians working in Russia in the 18th and 19th century. No comment are needed. They are all from Germany. And in the next uh, two graphics, we can see the presence of foreigners in those centuries and charged to write down the Russian history. They are almost 100%. For more detailed proof of what I'm presenting you, please watch the video about Tartaria of the New Earth Channel that I will publish right after this chapter of Suomel. It is just amazing. But please go visit their site megalits.org and the beautiful New Earth uh, YouTube channel. Again, as I did uh, with the first part of this video, I will add uh, a link at the bottom to the study of Anatoly Fomenko and the new chronology project. On the screen, uh, you can see their compilation of books called uh, History, Fiction or Science. You can order them for free. It is time for humanity to wake up. We have been lied and tricked enough. It is time to find out uh, our true origins and history. As humans, we are very special and important. I hope that this uh, simple series of documentaries that I'm creating, which is really nothing special, just uh, an enormous thank you to the world, can help somebody to understand uh, where to start asking for answers. The next uh, episode will be one of the most uh, interesting to me because of the archaeological topics that I will touch. But uh, as I did uh, with the other chapters, I will leave you on a note of suspense 
at not uh, revealing anything else about the next chapter. Thanks for watching and uh, listening. I will end uh, this video with uh, a list of waters that help uh, some of those murky issues to flow toward uh, the truth.